I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm down at the Hyannis High Arts Artist Shanties on Ocean Street, Bismore Park, Hyannis Harbor. This is a really tough job for me, I know. Tough to be down here on a gorgeous afternoon, beautiful breezes, working waterfront, people coming and going, but here I am. We're going to spend a little time today with a few of the artists as part of the Artist Shanty program. You can find out all sorts of information about the program, how it began, how you can be if you're an artist to get involved, right online at artsbarnstable.com. Let's now take a visit with Margot Sherman. You've been doing this now since this program began nine seasons ago. Yes, I have. Um, this is my ninth, ninth year here. Ninth year here. You've gone from being here for many weeks at a time to several different weeks throughout the season. And I'm sure you've seen the program grow from different artists coming in and the people that come, the area itself that's changed so much. And your work, I'm sure, has changed with these seasons. Yes, it, um, it has. The, the program is fantastic for all artists. We have, um, it's developed into a great program that we have people coming back every single year. Every season I have customers that have been here maybe three, four, five years ago and are so happy that I'm still here. And um, they purchase, I had a lady the other day that had purchased a bag and she had worn it so much that it wore out, so she purchased another one, the same thing. And I was here a few weeks ago when you happened to be here, and there was a woman from Montreal, I believe it's Marianne from Montreal, yes. who had, it was so beautiful to see her come. It was as if you were old time friends, that she's come every single year to see you, and there's so many more stories like that. Yes, she has come every year. Um, she's purchased jackets and bags, and every year she comes back and purchases more. And it's just great to see her. We sometimes correspond via email. Let's talk a little bit about that and your product and, and, and the type of work that you have here. Well, um, I started in the beginning mostly with tapestry product. And as I um, spoke with customers and as the product developed, I switched more into cottons and more into real um, coastal design with, sh with shells and hydrangea fabrics and I I make uh, placemats runners and bags and I love the work and I love being here and meeting all the people that um, that come and visit. Sure, you meet people from around the region, around the world, the artist community itself as well, meeting new artists and forming those friendships too. Every season, every season I meet new artists that I've become friends with and we go to lunch during the season and it's just it's wonderful. It's been a wonderful experience for me. Good. Now, the coastal products that you say, it seems that there are people that are drawn to that. Let's talk a little bit about, you were mentioning the hydrangea work and the, the blue um, anchors and mm -hmm. nautical theme. Nautical. We have, um, I, I basically work with nautical themes, except for the hydrangeas, which are so um, indigenous to this, the, this area. We have them growing everywhere. And so th that's a great product. And I, I could barely make it fast enough to uh, for people uh, purchasing it, and um, and of, of course the nautical and I have lighthouses and shells and and um, that type of thing. So let me ask you, Margot, you work right down here. As I said, I was teasing that I can sew. I actually <laughs> cannot sew at all, so I have such an admiration for that. Let's just briefly talk about where where you learned how to do this. Um, well, I've always loved sewing. When I was a little girl, my mom would make doll clothes and things for me, um, for my dolls, and so I just kind of, I think, picked up from that. I made my children's clothing way back when, and I just started, um, I just love fabric, you know, I always wanted to paint, but I couldn't paint, so I thought I'd work with fabric. That's pretty close. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your painting, you can do it so well. That's so right. for our viewers, Margot, they can find you at capecodaccents.com, and we love having you here at the Shanties. I'm glad it's such a wonderful experience for well, you. Thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's been a wonderful ex experience for me.
I'm with Susanna Wheelwright, which ties in nicely with the type of work you do. I'm sure I'm not the first one to say that. Spinning wheel, we're here to talk a little bit about your work today and including some fresh vegetables as well, also locally grown. And I tried some new kinds of tomatoes. That's kind of neat too, Susanna. But thank you for your time today. You first came to the shanties last year, and so I want to talk to you about your shanty experience, and you're back again. Obviously, it was a positive one. It what was. you find about being in the shanties? Let's first start with that. Well, uh, you can't beat the view. It's a million dollar view, and everybody who's here is pretty happy because they're on vacation, and a lot of them are really fascinated to figure out what it is that you're doing, um, what, what kind of work you're doing. You know, they, they see what you're doing, and then, and then half of them run in, and want to talk to you and ask lots of questions. And the other half sort of, you know, maybe not half, less than half. Some of them keep walking and go on to the jewelry or the fishing boats or whatever they're interested in. So it's, it's a pretty like low stress, um, high excitement kind of a scene. And it's also the intersection of a lot of different scenes, which I like. So it's, you know, the fishing boats, it's the tourists, it's the people working here, it's the culture, it's the, you know, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah. And as you say, you not only get to sell your work, you get yeah. to work on your work. Have you changed your work since you've been here? Do you take in some of the feedback? Yeah, I definitely have. Um, and I still am trying to figure out, you know, what people want to see. And, and, you know, some of it is, I think they want to see things that are different that they've never seen before, like new kinds of vegetables or new kinds of soap. Because I've seen these soaps, you know, in, in gift shops with, you know, felted wool on top. But I've never seen people reusing sweaters. So I was like, why, why not try that? At the moment, though, they haven't really sold very well. So, you know, obviously I need to either figure out a different way to market them or, or you know, change the product a little bit. So part of it's just trying to figure out prices and what products to show people. Right, which is a big part of our Shanty program, mm -hmm. to give the artists an opportunity to figure all of that out. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about some of your rugs here, about, yeah. the, about the product itself and how you make that. Sure. Um, <laughs> the larger ones I do on a, a loom at home that's a, quite a wide loom. Um, and I can actually do two smaller runners or yoga mats on that loom at home. Um, and that allows me, it's a bigger, heavier loom. It's both wider and I can pack the, the reused fabric in better. I use fabric strips that I cut up um, from fabric that people give me or estate sales or yard sales, that kind of thing. Um, so it's all reused, recycled. Um, and it's, Which is very important to you. It is. That's, that's definitely a big part of why I'm here and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I actually grew up being a spinner and a knitter and um, was used to working with yarn and things and that was very much more about texture and this is a lot more about color and sort of the ethos of reusing. So I just, I'm, I feel very lucky to get to come in and play with color every day and talk to kids about weaving and how the loom works. You know, I was a teacher in my former life and so I'm always excited to talk to kids. It also fits in really well with the Massachusetts State curriculum because a lot of the kids have gone to Lowell to go see the textile mills and they want to come tell me what they know about weaving and looms. And I actually had a couple guys stop in yesterday who'd both been to UMass Lowell back when it was Lowell Tech. So I learned that it was a tech school that taught weaving. Who sure. knew? Who knew? And is that you said you've been weaving a long time. Let's talk a little bit about that and oh, sure. how you started. Yeah, I, I started um, to weave t about 20 years ago and I learned in a studio in Vermont. It was um, high school students getting to learn with a teacher and she was welcoming to, to you know, other teachers. <laughs> I was teaching math and social studies. Um, and so I, that's where I learned and then eventually she gave me a loom that they were culling from the studio. And that's actually the one I have here today because it's my more portable loom. It's very well loved and lots of people ask about it. Um, and basically I took a hiatus from weaving for like 10, 15, maybe at least 10 years um, because I, you know, life got in the way. So here I am back again. When I moved to Cape Cod full time, I made the commitment to buy a big loom and work with fabrics and sort of switched up my craft, you know, from the, from the knitting, spinning, you know, working with wool to the working with fabric. It's and here really, I am. Here you are. It's interesting <laughs> to see how it's evolved and where it'll take you. And in yeah. addition to the rugs, let's briefly talk about, because you also teach yoga, and sure. let's talk about um, that product line. A lot of folks come through and I would, I would, you know, even people who aren't yogis might like one of these rugs as a, as a, you know, runner for their hallway. They're super soft underfoot. Um, and I've definitely been playing with product wise um, using different materials. So both really soft like flannels and jerseys that would soak up sweat for hot yoga or um, are you'd really like to lie on if you're doing Shavasana. And then also with non-skid materials like the 
bike inner tubes, you know, that, that don't, don't move when you're doing your downward facing dog. Um, and also um, some of the packaging materials. So, so that's another piece that I've sort of brought in and I'd love to do workshops too, in which people come and bring their own materials that are special to them and, and design their own yoga mats and then I take them away and weave them on my loom at home. So it's so, almost like that's, and yeah. that makes it extra special in that connection yeah. for that person that's given you a part of them and their materials Absolutely. as well. And what we're excited about too, Susanna, and we talked about, as you mentioned, workshops and part of the Shanty program here is to see the artists grow and, and be represented elsewhere or mm -hmm. do other things within the community. And we've mm -hmm. talked about having some workshops. So I want to tell our viewers to look in the fall that hopefully we will have you or early next spring to have you doing perhaps some workshops mm -hmm. or even teaching some yoga at the Guy Your Barn sure. and elsewhere throughout town. Yeah. So we're just about out of time. Let's tell our viewers how they can find you online. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have an Etsy site that, that I wish were more updated. Again, I'm going to plead new mom. Um, very little time online. Um, but I have an Etsy shop that's Oh Susanna Rugs. Um, and I also um, have a Google site that's also Oh Susanna Rugs. And, and then you can reach me. Um, at gmail.com as oh Susanna Artisan Rugs. Perfect. Thank you. And, and, that, and also through our town website, artsbarnstable.com, you can find out all information on all the artists on the Shanty Program and all the arts happenings in and around Hyannis and all seven villages of Barnstable. For Susanna Wilwright, I'm Melissa Chartrand, wishing you an artful day.